can do it too. Music also helps the show attract an audience beyond preschoolers, and so does the writing. Hello, me, Alastair Cookie. Welcome to Monsterpiece Theater, home of classy drama. Sesame Street is a very difficult show to write because it is written on, on more than one level. It's written so the youngest child can absolutely understand what we're teaching. And then it's written so that the parents get a kick out of it. Me, Claudius. No, no, no. Me, Claudius. What? Me, Claudius? Me still not know who Claudius, but me, Alistair Cookie, saying good night for Monsterpiece Theater. <laughs> Guest stars from lots of fields often appear on Sesame Street. When I was on the show, it made me a hero in my house. Come on, put down that ducky. Put down the ducky. Put down the ducky. Duck, duck, ducky. Put down the ducky. You gotta leave the duck alone. <laughs> but while guest stars hold the older audience, the preschooler always comes first. Kids can really tell when something is fake and when something is not sincere. So if there's anybody that we have to be real for, it's a kid. I think it's easier to fool an adult. If the parents are laughing and at the same time there's something else going on that the kids are enjoying, you know what I mean, that's fine. But if there's nothing for the kids in the bit, uh-uh. The kids are never forgotten. The Muppets were created so children would have characters to identify with. Characters who express kids' personality traits and feelings. Tomorrow? That's right. You mean there's going to be a new baby on Sesame Street tomorrow? Yep. Gee, well, I can't wait till then. This is so exciting. Can't you get him now? The bird acts, and uh, we accept him as a child, even though he doesn't look anything like one. Some of his adventures the children would like to be involved with themselves. <laughs> Oh, yuck. Uh, did you hear that? She said, congratulations. The, how could that happen to me? Oscar represents something different. A grouch that is grouchy but not mean. A lot of those kinds of thoughts that the kids feel are maybe socially unacceptable. And uh, so that the kid could actually uh, realize that he is feeling grouchy or unhappy or negative about things. And he, it was, again, just to, to be able to voice this stuff and see that it's okay. Rotten! Rotten! Yucky! Yucky! Yucky. Terrible. Terrible! Terrible! The Muppets, like Elmo here, are also helpful in demonstrating the three R's. Elmo can't read yet. <sighs> Don't be too sure of that. What? Wait a minute. Now what do you mean? Just tell me, tell me what you just wrote here, Elmo. Oh, that's easy, Bob. Elmo wrote Elmo's name. Watch. Elmo. See? See? You just read your name. Sesame Street and Jim Henson's Muppets also teach a fourth R, respect. You know, Bert, you're a real friend. I'm messy, and, and you don't like it messy. But because I'm your friend, you don't mind too much if I'm messy. Well... Not too much, Ernie. It doesn't matter if your fur is blue or green or if there's a nose on your face or a snuffle. Because we don't have uh, characters that are particularly white or black, we have all kinds of colors and, and attitudes. Even if we never taught anything else on the show in 20 years, I think if we can really help kids understand that people are people and it doesn't matter what color or shape they are, uh, I think that would have been worth the exercise just by itself. Tu me gustas, that means I like you. I really like you. Me gustas tu. I like to see your face. I like to hear your voice. Something like 40 million children have, if you will, graduated from Sesame Street over the 20 years that it's been on the air. I watched it when I was in fourth grade, when it first came out, and I, and I still like it. I like the way they, uh, they have the numbers and the shapes and the alphabet, and they constantly repeat it, and she likes, she enjoys the children. I have a four-and-a-half-year-old daughter who watches the program, and that is how we first uh, got to 
have Sesame Street in the family, and now I can say that the entire family watches it. We are perhaps the single common experience that most Americans who are growing up today have uh, to bring to their world. So in some ways, we are the biggest little schoolhouse that there is, and that's only in this country. And Sesame Street reaches out even farther, in fact, to 84 countries. Most use the English version, but several produce original shows based on Sesame Street, which incorporate their own culture and values. CTW provides um, certain broadcast elements, um, animation, Muppet segments, live action films. We do not provide studio segments because that would be um, culturally inappropriate. Some countries have their own versions of Big Bird. There's a green bird, a blue bird, a camel, a porcupine, and a bear. This is Plaza Sesimo. It's one of the many international co-productions currently on the air. They're modeled after Sesame Street, but with a curriculum to fit each country's needs. Some of them are based very much on our curricula. Some of the research is, I think, helpful, but I think, you know, each situation is very different. And that's the point about the model. The model is extremely adaptable, and that's why we've had such success transferring the program around the world. Bigotti. Shalom, Mishu Babait? Benz? Benz, at the Babait? Oh, it's the Klula. The Internet. Most of them are relatively recent. Which is American kids' dance. Like this season's Big Bird in Japan. Uh, 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 hello, everybody. I mean, uh, uh, Ohio. Ohio! <laughs> uh, I'm Big Bird, and he's Barty. <laughs> uh, we come from America. <laughs> Big Bird sort of um, marvels at things that the Japanese, uh, you know, take for granted that are very surprising to us, using chopsticks, taking your shoes off before you enter your house, the um, tradition of bowing, of respect for your elders, um, and this kind of thing, which it would be very foreign to a, um, you know, group of American kids or elements that we always want to introduce in our specials. There's more to Sesame Street, though, than appears on television screens. Sesame Street reaches out to the community with off-screen activities to reinforce the show's educational messages, like a pilot reading program for inner-city children in a New York City school district. Even before the show was on the air, its producers realized their target audience, children of minorities and the poor, were not likely to be watching public television. So we went around and we held mass meetings with parents, and we said to them, you are your child's first teacher, and your home is the child's first school. You do teach your child every day, and now we want to have you watch this show with your child so that you will know other things that the child needs to know before they start school. Since then, the Community Education Service has developed off-screen outreach programs to tackle fire safety for youngsters, lead poisoning prevention, traffic safety, and preparedness for natural disasters all using the credibility of Sesame Street as a vehicle. It's this Ernie right here. It's a small detector. Listen. Beep, These programs beep. draw on the popularity of Sesame Street characters to present important safety information in a form very young children can understand. Another side of Sesame Street is its toys, magazines, and books, those things that help support the cost of the show's high-quality production. The ABCs. The ABCs. You know what you call that? Alphabet. The alphabet. You know, the first time I saw that, though, I didn't know it was the alphabet. I thought it was a word. Oh, I was so embarrassed. I remember it clearly. Abkadepki Jekyllmanopkrstuvrix is is the most remarkable word I've ever seen. For millions of kids and adults, Sesame Street has become more than just a television show. It's part of the American culture. I wonder who's dizzy. Oh, he loves it. He loves it. Yeah. Go, Slimy, go. Hold on there. 
From the music of the maestros to mathematics, Sesame Street has helped to prepare a generation of children for the transition from home to school, both intellectually and emotionally. But Sesame Street knows it will face different challenges in the future. That way! I think what we have to do in the future is just make sure that we're current with the changes in the style of the American family uh, and adapt the program to that. We are going to work very hard to get daycare providers aware of Sesame Street so that you build some floor of standards under, under the daycare day that these children have so that we will be assured, I hope, that every child learns something of cognitive and emotional value in the daycare situation and isn't just wandering around or playing because there's many hours there. So we will be uh, addressing daycare providers from here on out in, in the way that we once addressed parents. And so Sesame Street will meet the challenges of the next decade. It will continue to grow and change as its audience grows and changes. Sesame Street is a way for all of us to look at what is going on around us and a way to help the next generation make our world a little better. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve, thirteen, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen, fifteen, sing, sing a song, yeah, yeah. sing a song.